Hello, and welcome to this quick clip looking at hydrogen bonding and its effects on the properties of water. So it's a type of intermolecular force which is much stronger than other types because of the electronegativity difference of the elements involved. It's got a couple of things you've got to have in place. You have to have hydrogen being covalently bonded to nitrogen, oxygen or fluorine. And the other element, e.g. not hydrogen, must possess a lone pair. So if we look at this uh, periodic table where it's got the electronegativity um, trends, you can see quite clearly that the difference in electronegativity between hydrogen and nitrogen, oxygen and fluorine is quite high. So with hydrogen, for example, having an electronegativity value of 2.2, nitrogen having an electronegativity value of 3.04, oxygen 3.44 and fluorine 3.98, you can see where the basis of hydrogen bonding comes from. So when you're drawing a hydrogen bond in an exam question, you've got to do three things because it's normally a three mark answer. So the lone pair of electrons must be clearly drawn. The partial charges must be clearly drawn in place on the hydrogen and the atom it's bonded to. And a dotted line, ideally labelled hydrogen bond, should go between the lone pair and the hydrogen that the hydrogen bond is involved in. So let's have a look at a couple of other examples of what it might look like if it wasn't just two water molecules. So you could have, for example, a hydrogen bond between two ethanol molecules, or a hydrogen bond between ethanol and water. So looking at how hydrogen bonding affects water properties, uh, surface tension is when the intermolecular forces between water molecules at the water surface allow light objects to float because the water molecules are held together uh, next to each other by hydrogen bonding. So the lattice in ice is called an open lattice because it's, uh, the uh, molecules of water, the H2O molecules, are held slightly apart from each other when they arrange themselves in a solid formation. And uh, what this means is that ice can float on water, essentially. Another uh, feature of an open lattice is that when ice forms, it actually expands in volume relative to the water from which it came. So in extreme cases, if that water is contained within pipes, it can cause them to burst, as you can see from the picture. And in winter, to stop this happening, to a car radiator, which is quite an expensive job to replace. Uh, motorists add antifreeze, which is a molecule called ethane-1,2-diol. So if you dissolve ethane-1,2-diol in the water that you have in your radiator in your car, it reduces the number of hydrogen bonds that can form because of the length of its molecule. So what happens is the water doesn't freeze until a much lower temperature, which protects the delicate water pipes in the car radiator bursting when the weather turns very cold. And the final property that's affected by hydrogen bonding is the higher than expected boiling point of water. This is because of the extra energy needed to overcome hydrogen bonds. It has a much higher boiling point compared to other compounds of hydrogen with group 6 elements. So this idea also applies to uh, other compounds of hydrogen with group 5 and group 7 elements. So in other words, hydrogen fluoride has a higher than expected boiling point and ammonia has a higher than expected boiling point. So hopefully this has been a fairly useful little roundup of how hydrogen bonding in particular affects the properties of water. So until next time, thanks for listening and see you soon.